Have I told you about the time I've been to Kona? <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to share what I think will happen with the men's race for Kona 2022 um, rather than just a podium or predictions. I'm going to try and predict what I think will happen from the moment the gun goes off to the sort of first three, five guys crossing the line. So, I've got to put my glasses on for this bit. Matty, so, yeah. I've made notes. <laughs> so, the men's race will probably play out, in my opinion, uh, like St George did. A lot of the front guys that uh, made that front swim pack and got away on the bike and stayed away are in Kona. And a lot of those guys have raced in Kona before or have at least proven their swim uh, and some of the bike pedigree before. Um, Josh Amberger, uh, before he swam hard and led the swim and created a gap. We've seen him in more recent years, maybe not swim quite as hard, so he has some company on the bike straight away. So expect him to sort of repeat that role, but the key people that will be with him um, should be the likes of Carl Smith, Braden Curry, Daniel Beckergaard, Florian, and Sam Laidlow. There are a few people uh, that weren't at St George that may make that pack the most notable potentially and my heart really hopes this happens, is Tim O'Donnell is in that front group. Um, there may be some stragglers that, that are just off the back of that group or were there for some of it. Um, and these might be people like David McNamee, Jan van Berkel, and potentially Peter Heimerich that may make that group a bit bigger. Um, that would be a considerable group going onto the bike. Um, and if you take out some of the people that aren't there, like Jan and Alistair, there was really the potential for that group to be uh, uh, away from the front of the race and effectively nobody outside of that group potentially would be on the podium. Um, going on to the bike, um, as Tim McDonald's uh, alluded to in one of his videos recently, he's hoping to be there and he's also hoping to find some allies and that people keep it relatively sensible on the bike. Uh, a few of those guys, uh, someone like Daniel Beckergaard, has made that group before and after about 20 miles back in 2019 struggled on the bike and uh, I don't know the specific reason why he did but we're hoping that or I'm hoping that people like him stay there for the full duration and whatever the groups and cyclists do behind at best they may be matching that group which is what we saw happen in St George and we never saw that gap of three four minutes really um, get taken down. Uh, a few variables <laughs> <That's my crotch. laughs> Uh, a few variables or people to factor in obviously and, and I know most of us are going to want to see this play out is people like Magnus Ditlev who, who may, and it's a big may, make that group or not actually be in the second group and be somewhere in between the front and the back. I think if that happens it's maybe game over for a lot of people. Um, but people like Camworth, people like Joe Skipper, people like Lionel, uh, the fans favourite Sebi Keenley, um, they're all going to be relatively close together. They all are very experienced and it's going to see, uh, it'd be interesting to see if they actually can close that group down. If I'm honest, how Magnus races, um, and I did uh, have the pleasure of meeting him in Roth and I told him then I was going to put some money on him winning Kona. Um, I think he is probably the only person that's going to potentially make a really big move to get to the front of the race. Um, and I don't see the likes of Lionel, uh, uh, Sebi, Skipper, actually closing that gap um, and actually the uh, the gap staying pretty consistent and possibly even going out a little bit. So off the bike I have those guys I mentioned coming out to swim however I think that group would have shredded a few. The few being um, laid low I don't think will stay there. He will do his best. We know he likes to, to push it but I think he may uh, be in his first one. He won't make it to the end of the bike. Um, it also is a big question mark on whether Carl Smith will stay there. Um, we saw him nail it in St George in terms of lasting the whole bike, but it is his form there or not, we're not quite sure. So I think that group is going to lose a few people, and particularly off the bike, 
I'm hoping Tim O'Donnell stays there. We're hoping Daniel Bechelgaard stays there. And we're hoping Braden Curry does. And the only person that may get up to them is uh, Ditlev. Um, there are some notable names I've not even mentioned yet, which is Blumenfeld and Eden. Um, I certainly don't see them getting to the front of the race on the bike at all. Um, if anything, um, I think they'll be sat in this quite large pack with Patrick Lang and all these other uh, athletes. And I think uh, the likes of Skipper and that will actually have caught them and put some time into them. We saw Christian be super patient in St George. We've seen him be super patient at the Collins Cup. I really don't think he's going to stress about a four to five minute gap off the bike. Going on to the run, um, the the key player, if the group I think leads it off, is what does Braden Curry do? Um, we've seen him in Kona before, go bananas and run in the, the high 230s, low 240s. He's more than capable of it, but he tends to run it with quite a big positive split. Um, I'd really like to see him run with the likes of Tim O'Donnell um, and potentially Daniel Beckard and actually just see those guys sort of use each other to pace it sensibly for the first 10 miles. I think if they do that, um, it's going to be really hard for anyone to come up uh, and catch them. Um, in terms of those coming from behind, uh, Lionel, I think is, I don't think he's bluffing or playing games with his YouTube sort of thing, but I think he's definitely in better shape than uh, potentially uh, is either been shown on YouTube or he's shown in recent races. Um, so I do expect him to make his way forward. I honestly think only one of the two Norweg Norwegians is going to factor. Um, I think it's going to be Eden over Blumenfeld. I don't want to predict bad luck for an particular athlete, but I just think that uh, one of them will, will have an issue of some degree. Um, so Eden may be the one that advances. Um, but I think they're going to run out of road and I think the uh, final sort of few K is where it's going to be decided, the final six, uh, five to six K. I think it's going to be Braden Curry. I think Lionel will come second again and I hope and uh, believe Ditlev will be the person that rounds out the podium. I think Tim O'Donnell will finish in the top five and uh, Eden may join him in that case. So my top five is going to be Braden winning, Lionel second, uh, Ditlev third, Tim O'Donnell, and Eden fourth or fifth. Uh, not yeah. Who comes fourth? Who comes fifth? It, it won't matter. Um, and that's the top five. So uh, as I've said on social media, I'm not going to predict the women's race because I would effectively say it's Fenella and Rue for a sprint finish and therefore I'm too biased. So I, instead, here's some tips from uh, when I did the race in 2019, which whether you're pro or age group probably or could be of use. The first one is to wear sun cream, <laughs> seems obvious, uh, but wear sun cream from the start of the day. They do put it on you in transitions. Um, but if you can put a bit on and it's waterproof and it's good for the environment, swim in it, it definitely will protect you when you're out on the bike. Um, you don't feel the heat as much on the bike, but you certainly do get exposed to the sun and you don't want nice bright red arms and legs. Um, in the swim itself, the start is chaos. Uh, it's a big mass water start for most age groups. I'm not completely familiar with how they're doing it this year, but it normally is a lot of people. It's a lot of people of a very similar ability. So the, the takeout is quite quick. It lasts a lot longer, the sort of punch and the sort of fighting that goes on in the water, all friendly, of course, um, but expected to last a little while. Um, and in particular, it may be uh, the first time you or somebody may have raced non-wetsuit over this distance. Um, the key thing that I focused on um, was keeping my legs kicking, not necessarily for propulsion. Uh, I don't kick a lot to propel myself, so that would tire me out, but kicking them to keep my body position nice and high in the water trying to make up for the fact that you don't have a neoprene wetsuit. If you are somebody who is looking to do well or race the actual race and you're in that kind of uh, high 50s uh, around the hour mark for the swim or, or whatever you might swim if you want to be competitive, um, the first couple of K or about 10K on the bike is really important in the sense of don't go bananas and set a new FTP, but definitely use it as your opportunity to get past people, overtake people, um, there's a few dead turns on the on the Polani road, etc. So don't be afraid to overtake people within yourself, obviously. But once you get on the Queen K, you don't want to be surging, you know, to get around big packs of people, or you get stuck in a pace line and 
and you get frustrated because you don't think you're riding hard enough, etc. Once on the Queen K, relax on the bike. It goes very quickly, uh, the, the bike in, in Kona. Um, a, because it can be quite quick and you can be doing speeds of up to sort of 40, 45k an hour at times. Um, but the whole idea of the bike in this race in particular is to not overcook yourself, make sure you're hydrating and fueling and trying to keep yourself cool if that's the case. Um, the two things for me on the run, one was actually holding ice cubes. I think Lionel mentioned it in a video recently and he thought it was rubbish, but I actually found holding ice cubes in between the aid stations uh, something to focus on. It may not cool you down, but if you focus on your hands and how cool your hands are, you tend to think you are cooler as a collective was, was my sort of mentality to it. And the last part is, um, and you may have experienced this already if it's your first time there, there are a lot of egos in Kona. Um, so that last 10 miles on the run, last 10K of the run, lots of people are walking, lots of people are very frustrated that they're 50th in their age group and not winning their age group like they may be used to. Um, so if you are running five minute Ks or quicker in that last 10K, um, you will be running reasonably well and you will be overtaking people. And if you bear that in mind and have that as a positive thought throughout the run uh, to maintain um, a good pace, then you will enjoy that last part rather than sulking or um, annoyed at yourself for not performing, etc. or whatever these, these people might think. Um, enjoy it. I can't wait to be there next year. And, uh, and forget all the lessons I've just told you. <laughs> <laughs>